So this house believes that pharma and biotech would be better resourcing clinical development in-house than wasting precious budget on CROs. We will start with um, Anna, who will give an argument for the motion. We then have uh, an opportunity for the motion to be refuted, which will be taken by Steve. The baton then passes to the four team again, and Richard will carry things forward. And then the debate will finish with a short presentation from Nancy. So, I put to you that benchmarks provided by Big Pharma, one of them being Pfizer at the end of the 90s, put forward the need for 25 to 30% of FTE to be uh, there for overseeing outsourced projects. This benchmark doesn't hold fast today uh, in our environment, where often internal uh, FTE allocation can be unlimited. In one of my previous experiences, I saw one company actually allocating up to eight times the planned FTE for oversight, or rather micromanagement, of the CRO. In addition, uh, some case studies provided by Carita, an industry expert, show the not-so-hidden costs of strategic partnerships, from selection right up to two years into the relationship. And that cost can go up to $30 million in r and R&D spend on alliance management. Not exactly peanuts uh, for uh, such a, an R&D spend. So where is the cost containment here when you waste huge sums of money on resources for the tendering process from the RFI right through to the, let's not forget, out of scopes? Uh, I put it to you, my dear colleagues, that the ROI and project delivery success coming from an in-house A-team, dedicated skills and competent personnel can only be better and certainly not worse than that coming from some of our CRO partners today. Pharma is losing its experience, its IP, its innovation, and more importantly, its competitive advantage, and can lead to slower, less efficient decision-making as it struggles to make key strategic decisions on its product portfolio. Pharma needs to actively improve its talent manage retention by keeping in high strategic word, work, rather. Providing challenges, accountability, flexible working conditions to its employees will reduce the blame NIH culture arising in pharma companies today and increase employee satisfaction, leading to greater efficiencies, innovation, better decision making, all key to the sustainability of competitive advantage in the marketplace. Biopharmas need CROs and it's pure hubris to believe you can do everything. You need to control your fixed costs, your structural costs. You need that flexibility. $150 billion was spent in biopharma R&D, and about $27 billion of that is outsourced. That's an awful lot of people who are doing the wrong things if it's completely wrong. There's a nugget of something that's really right here. You sometimes need access to experts and expertise you simply don't have available at the time you need it. And sometimes you need the comfort, the certainty, the confidence a second pair of eyes can give you. The reason outsourcing has steadily risen this year to 69% of sponsors uh, development spend, which is, by the way, the Avoca 2016 most recent report numbers, is because it works, because it is an essential tool. It provides a powerful, non-dilutive to all the biotech companies' way of sharing your risk. And this business, for anyone who hasn't noticed it, is all about risk. It's failed. Outsourcing has failed. Now, is it the CROs? Is it the sponsors? I would argue it's the sponsors because they're not being sponsors. Lack of continuity. I would assure you everybody believes in consistency, continuity. CRO staff, we have created a monster. Staff are always looking for the next best opportunity. I'm amazed nobody's actually changed jobs since we came into the room because that seems to be what's happening in this environment. Who's actually facing the patients, the sites? It's not the sponsor anymore. It's our product. We should behave like a sponsor. We have abdicated responsibility to the CROs. We should be spending that resource and taking ownership 
not just handing it all out, getting rid of our people and relying upon the CROs to do our dirty work for us. And it's not dirty work, it's the clean, engaging, uplifting work that we do in actually providing new products which meet a medical need. We should be the face. How many times have we actually had to, as sponsors, send people out to sites to find out what's going on? And how many times do our people walk in and say, you're who? What product? We have failed. We need to take charge. We need to focus more internally. CROs should be partners. It's not working like that. We need to spend more money internally. Why do we outsource? What is it that we do? We're looking at resources. These are people. These are not textbooks. These are not pieces of paper. These are people. Do you explain to people what you want done? It's very easy to do it. Very detailed, taskless. Communicate. Make sure that everyone is on board. This is the best way to do it. You will fulfill all of your obligations, all of your deliverables. We don't have expertise all over. We don't have people in all geographic regions. We're moving into niche indications. We're moving into areas where we have to have people on the ground. Do we want to establish those units? No, that doesn't make any sense to us. We want to be financially prudent. And here, this means looking for the best option through staff that are on the <coughs> ground, through perhaps vendors who can offer this. That's the resource. Does uh, outsourcing save us a lot of money up front, which initially we all thought about? You have to look at it in terms of investing to a certain point, but it does give you the flexibility, again, resources to shift around and expertise. In this last session today, we have heard about the pressures of resourcing and micromanagement. We've heard about the pressures on finance and staff turnover. We've seen the level of customer satisfaction and engagement. And we've seen the fact that there is expertise and innovation and ability to source from other places. Music